I would start by doing some real due diligence. I would get to know the organization. What we've found on both the boards that I've served on, but also our organization that I lead, is that if people show up with passion and really understanding the organization before they become a board member, they're far more successful. And those board members who show up because a company told them they should be on the board or because they have a lot of money but they don't have a passion for what we're doing haven't lasted very long. You're also looking for a good fit with the core team on that nonprofit. So is the executive director someone with whom you get energy, you enjoy seeing, you trust them, you have a good relationship and rapport? And then who's the board chair or who serves on that board? Who will you be spending the majority of your time with? And learning from that experience, building a relationship. Are these people that you're going to enjoy seeing? Are they people that you can relate to? Are they Are people that would bring different experiences to you that you will learn and develop? And then when you're also looking, you want to look at the organization. Um, how long has it been in history? You know, what does its financial history look like? Are there any long-term commitments that they've made that would concern you? Or that might, there might be some opportunities ahead of the organization that excite you? And hopefully, after you've done your homework, um, checking on the stature of the organization, looking at some of their competitors as well, you can come back to that board chair or the executive director and say, these are the questions that I have, and have another conversation about how you create value um, for that organization, and then how you will be part of a team that ultimately helps that organization achieve impact. Volunteer a little bit. Work with them on a task force. See how they are. See if these are uh, individuals that you'd like to team up with. See if this potentially is a board that you'd be interested in joining. Show that you have an interest, but also have them show you um, how they might interact with you. Worst thing in the world is going on a board cold and then finding out it's not what I thought it was. Or they're not really using me for anything other than some money in my network. And so uh, testing them out a little bit and having a, a dating period is probably a good idea. And once you do, you'll, you'll find some things that you are um, able to play with them in a, in a unified fashion to have an impact on those things you're passionate about. When it comes to selecting a board, you really need to look at what the role of that board member is in the nonprofit. A couple ways to look at that. First of all, what about size? So most small nonprofits are under $2 million in revenue per year. I mean, there are millions of nonprofits in this country and so many are being created every day. But you want to be sure that if the organization is under two million, then you will have a much more hands-on role as a board member than if it is between two and five million, less involvement, and then huge boards like the Stanford, the Stanford Board of Trustees has even less oversight in terms of day-to-day -day operations of the nonprofit. So if you really want to get involved in strategy, as I would encourage the students to do, then finding smaller boards will have much, much more meaningful opportunities for hands-on engagement. So I would look at the size of the organization in terms of its revenue, and then also in terms of the number of employees. What are the attitudes? What's the knowledge that I bring to a nonprofit board? And what are they looking for? Does it align with the expectations? Every board I've ever worked with is different. I have a colleague that says, when you've seen one board, you've seen one board. And so every board is going to expect different things with respect to fundraising expectations or attendance at meetings, time of day of meetings. So you really have to align yourself with those expectations so that at the end of a period of time, you feel good that you've fulfilled the responsibilities. Um, and third to that, this will sound really, really weird, but I think every young person needs an exit strategy. Um, I think that you need to be able to say, this isn't working, and um, feel good about the fact that you tried with this one organization, this one board, but be fine with resigning if things aren't working out. And, and be okay if maybe the nominating committee doesn't renominate you. I mean, there's always some nonprofit board out there that wants your specific type of leadership, and it takes time sometimes to find that right board. I look back on my first 
board appointments and I think that for really quite an extended period I wasn't actually all that helpful. Um, I was able to help in my specific skill areas but I think it takes a great board chair and uh, the right atmosphere and an understanding of the vision and mission of the organisation before you really are in a position to see where you can yourself can contribute fully. I think of board service like dating. You go out on some dates. If you if you're if you like the organization, you continue to date, and you can get married sometime later. But I think the best thing is to learn by doing and get started. And if you feel you made a mistake on the first board, transition off that, but stay in the social innovation business.